All right, howdy folks, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about the latest news surrounding Broken Arrow. Now, besides a new dev diary detailing the Russian Moto Stroke specialization, there's also the amazing announcement that you can soon get your hands on a playable demo showcasing a mission from their campaign. If you want to check out Broken Arrow, I'll have their Steam store page linked down below, as well as a link to my playlist for a bunch more content on Broken Arrow. So let's get the demo news out of the way first. On February 6th, which is right around the corner, everyone can download a demo, which will include a single scenario from their single player story campaign. I may be wrong, but I don't remember too much info was given about the campaign other than to maybe not expect a world in conflict level of cinematics and story. But personally, I'm still just really excited to get my hands on a more polished version of the game. I'll of course be making videos on the demo, giving my thoughts, and I look forward to seeing what you guys think about it early next week. I'm personally hoping it's something similar to what we saw in the gameplay demo they released about a month or so ago, where they utilized air and Latin units as well as amphibious units, just so we can test all of those features out. Moving on to the new Moto Strelke dev diary and trailer, let's take a look at the trailer together and then go over the rather detailed news post they uploaded which shows off some of the units you can deploy. Do keep in mind this is a video game which does not depict real life events. So the trailer starts off and immediately it's interesting to note the animations on the vehicles when troops are mounting up with open doors and hatches on BTRs and BMPs. Here we can see a tank firing around, and right after, the ejection port on a turret opens to allow the propellant case to be removed. Then we see what I believe are BMP-3s, showcasing all three of their main weapon systems being fired. A 30mm auto cannon on the closest one, a 100mm main gun on the middle one, and an ATGM being launched from the furthest one. This next shot shows BMP-2s and dismounted infantry engaging contacts, and for some reason this shot really reminds me of like a Warden Conflict cinematic pan, though I do want to note that what appears to be very low quality shadows, whether this is on purpose to get frames or for another reason, it is just very noticeable to me. Here's a quick peek at some sort of recon vehicle raising an antenna. There's a better picture of it on the dev blog, which we'll look at later, but presumably this will allow for better spotting of units similar to how recon acts in war game. Roads are of course hugely important in Broken Arrow. Vehicles move much faster over them as can be seen here with this massive convoy, and setting up ambushes along roads, especially behind enemy lines, will be the smart commander's way of either slowing down or completely stopping enemy reinforcements from actually reaching the front lines. Personally, I can't wait to drop airborne behind enemy lines and do cheeky things like that. In the previous gameplay, the developers talked about how pilots can jump out of shot down planes depending on certain circumstances, and personally, I really love the idea of having these sort of mini side objectives kind of pop up randomly whenever a pilot does bail out. Opting to rescue the pilot and thus recover some of the cost of the lost aircraft versus losing not just a pilot, but potentially also the units sent to rescue him will be a very interesting choice to make. Everything they showcase in these trailers looks so good and I'm really hoping the demo will do it all justice. I have very high hopes for this game as I've always wanted a World in Conflict-esque game, but one taking place in modern day. Now, obviously the game will launch with the US and Russia as the two factions, though I believe the devs have somewhat confirmed that depending on how good the game performs sales-wise, we may or may not see more factions down the line, if I remember correctly. Now, let's take a look at the dev diary detailing the Russian Motostrelki specialization. In Broken Arrow, the Motostrelki are focused on ground mobility and they aim to become victorious through the quantity of units they field versus the quality of their units. This translates in-game to being able to deploy a large amount of cheap infantry squads with mostly older weapons across the battlefield in lighter BTR transports. The goal here is to overwhelm enemy defenses, break through their lines, and then get to the weaker supporting units such as the anti-air or artillery vehicles. The devs have a lot of units showcased here, so I'll just pick a few of my favorites 
I'd highly recommend checking out the full dev diary linked in the description on their store page. For recon, the Spetsnaz Gru sound really interesting. It's a seven man squad with suppressed weapons and top of the line anti-tank launchers. They can even provide laser designations for friendly air units or artillery. This may presumably increase their accuracy if these are on map artillery or air units, or perhaps these units have access to off map columns. I'm not really 100% sure. The Motostralki also gain access to the four post UAV, a recon drone that can be upgraded to have up to two Cornet ATGMs on board. The backbone of the Motostralki specialization has to be the Motostralki squad, squads of seven with AK-74Ms, two grenade launchers, a PKP medium machine gun, and an RPG-7 anti-tank launcher. All infantry in the Motostralki specialization can be transported in BTR-80s, MTLBs, or BMP-2s, though anti-tank teams cannot use the BMPs. All of these vehicles are also upgradable. Let's take the BTR-80. We can upgrade it to a BTR-82AT variant, which not only gives it a remote control turret, but also adds two concourse ATGMs. You can add cage armor to these BTRs as well to help against incoming RPGs, which will give it a little bit more sustainability in combat, but it also removes its amphibious capability, which is a very interesting choice to make between survivability or amphibious capability. One of the tanks a Motostalki can field is the T-72B. Is this the ability to get upgrades in the armor and fire control system areas, allowing you to survive more hits, or you can opt to forego these upgrades to make them very cheap to field. An interesting support unit is the 2S4 Tulpan. This fires a 130 kilogram projectile out of a 240 millimeter mortar. Though it's very slow on the reload, the impact of this is devastating. Only the oldest helicopters are available to the Motostrauki, with the Mi-8 MTV-2 being the oldest one they have. It can carry troops as well as supplies, and also has four pylons for equipment such as gun pods or rockets. I'm really excited to check out the Air Force in Broken Arrow and how it will all work, especially with the pilot mechanic. Favorite one they have in this list for me has to be the Su-24M2, allowing you to choose between either carrying 26 smaller 100 kilogram bombs or three heavier 1500 kilo fuel air bombs. There's a lot of information in here, but again, I'll advise you to take a look and read some of the dev diary for yourself. For now, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the upcoming Motostalki specialization for Broken Arrow. I am really, really excited to get my hands on the game on February 6th, and I look forward to making some content on the game then and seeing everyone's thoughts on it. For now, I'll catch you in the next one.